Our objectives for this lesson are the following. Define rational function and determine the domain and range of a rational function. Let us define rational function. It is a function of the form f of x is equal to p of x over q of x, where p of x and q of x are polynomial functions, and q of x is not equal to zero. The reason why q of x cannot be equal to zero is because dividing by zero will make the function undefined. Now, what is polynomial? A polynomial is an algebraic expression that contains algebraic terms. Terms may be constants, variables, and exponents, or combinations of these. Only positive integers, including zero, may be used for exponents. And the terms should not contain a variable in the denominator. Here are examples of polynomials. Negative 11 is a constant. A square root of 2 is also a constant, approximately equal to 1.41. 1 third is also a constant in fraction form. X over 3 is okay, though it has a denominator. The denominator is not a variable. 8x is a combination of a constant and a variable. 5x cubed is a combination of a constant and a variable raised to a positive integer. x minus 7, 7x squared minus 3 fourth x plus 25. Here are examples of not polynomials. 6 over x and 2x over x minus 5 are both not polynomials because they have a variable in the denominator. It says here, the terms should not contain a variable in the denominator. Negative 15x raised to negative 3 is not a polynomial because the variable is raised to a negative integer. It says here, only positive integers, including 0, may be used for exponents. While square root of x is equivalent to x raised to 1 half. And 1 half is not an integer. So these are not polynomials. Let us determine whether the following is a rational function or not. Remember that a rational function is a ratio of two polynomials. Number one, f of x is equal to x squared plus 3x plus 2 all over x plus 4. Our numerator is a polynomial. The denominator is a polynomial too. Therefore, this is a rational function. Next, g of x is equal to 1 over 3x squared. 1 is a constant and it is a polynomial. 3x squared is also a polynomial. Rational function. Next, h of x is equal to x squared plus 4x minus 3 all over 2. This is a polynomial and this is also a polynomial. Rational function. Next, y is equal to the square root of x plus 1 all over x cubed minus 1. A square root of x plus 1 is equivalent to x plus 1 raised to 1 half, and 1 half is not an integer. Therefore, our numerator is not a polynomial. Hence, this is not a rational function. Next, g of x is equal to 1 divided by x plus 2 over x minus 2. When this is simplified, this is equivalent to x minus 2 over x plus 2. This is a polynomial, and this is a polynomial. Therefore, this is a rational function. Let us proceed to our second objective, which is to determine the domain and range of a rational function. Domain is the set of all possible values for x, while range is the set of all resulting values of y. There are several ways on how we could write domain and range. First one is through roster method. This is listing or enumerating all the values. It uses braces. Here are the examples. Next one is interval notation. It uses parentheses and brackets. Here are the examples. And the third one is set builder notation. It uses braces and a vertical line. Here are examples. This is read as x is an element of real number such that x is less than negative 1. Others write in this manner. x such that x is an element of real number where x is less than negative 1. Either of the two is correct. However, in rational function, the interval notation and set builder notation are commonly used. Let's have the first one. f of x is equal to 1 over x. 
To determine the domain, set the denominator equal to 0 and solve. The domain is the set of all real numbers except those values that will make the denominator equal to 0. So we're going to set our denominator equal to 0. And that's it. 0 is the number that will make our denominator 0. So our domain is the set of all real numbers except 0. Let's write that in set builder form. x is an element of real number such that x is not equal to 0. In interval notation, this is negative infinity to 0, union 0 to positive infinity. This means that only 0 is not included in our domain. That's why we make use of parentheses. Now for the range. To determine the range, let us replace f of x with y and then solve for the values of x. So we're going to replace f of x with y, so we have y is equal to 1 over x. To solve for x, let us apply cross multiplication, so we have xy is equal to 1. And then let us divide both sides by y. So we have x is equal to 1 over y. Now we have a denominator, and we are going to solve this the way we do it with domain. Let us set y equal to 0. And 0 is the number that will make our denominator 0. So this is the number that we are going to exclude in our range. So our range will be y is an element of real number such that y is not equal to 0. This is y because we are talking about range. Let's have the next one. y is equal to x minus 3 all over x plus 2. So for the domain, let us set our denominator equal to 0. So we have x plus 2 equals 0. Let us move 2 to the other side. So x equals negative 2. Now, negative 2 is the number that will make our denominator equal to 0. So we are going to exclude negative 2 in our domain. So we have x is an element of real numbers such that x is not equal to negative 2. Interval notation, negative infinity to negative 2, union negative 2 to positive infinity. For the range, since this is already in y equals f of x form, let us now solve for x. So let's copy the function. Let us apply cross multiplication. So y times x plus 2 equals x minus 3. y times x is yx or xy. And then we have y times positive 2 is positive 2y. And then let's copy equals x minus 3. Let us combine like terms. Let us move x here and 2y here. So this will become xy minus x equals negative 2y minus 3. Let us factor out x. So this will become x times y minus 1 equals, copy this, and then let us divide both sides by y minus 1. Now we have a denominator, so let us equate our denominator to 0. Let us move this to the other side, so y equals 1. This is the number that will make our denominator 0, therefore we are going to exclude this number in our range. So our range will be y is an element of real numbers such that y is not equal to 1. Interval notation, negative infinity to 1, union 1 to positive infinity. Next one, y is equal to x squared minus 16 all over x plus 4. Again, for the domain, let us equate our denominator equal to 0. So let's move this to the other side, x equals negative 4. So negative 4 is the number that will make our denominator equal to 0. Therefore, our domain is the set of all real numbers except negative 4. Let's write it down. For the range, since this is already in y equals f of x form, let us now solve for x. So let's copy the function. Notice that our numerator is factorable and the factors are x minus 4 and x plus 4. From here, we can now cancel x plus 4. So we have y equals x minus 4. But we need to solve for x. So let's transpose negative 4 to the other side. So this will become x equals y plus 4. Now, we know that our x 
cannot be equal to negative 4. So it means that y plus 4 should not be equal to negative 4. Now to solve for y, let us move positive 4 to the other side. So it will become negative 4 minus 4 is not equal to y. Hence, this is y is not equal to negative 8. This is the number that we are going to exclude in our range. Let's write it down. Another one, y is equal to x plus 1 all over x squared. Again, for the domain, let us equate our denominator equal to 0. So let us take the square root of both sides. So x is equal to the square root of 0. And square root of 0 is equal to 0. So this is the number that will make our denominator 0. So the domain is the set of all real numbers except 0. So let's write it. Now for the range, since this is also in y equals f of x form, let us now solve for x. Let's copy the function. Let's apply cross multiplication. So we have yx squared equals x plus 1. This is a quadratic form. So let us move x plus 1 to the other side. So yx squared minus x minus 1 equals 0. Notice that this is in resemblance with ax squared plus bx plus c, a quadratic equation. And we have learned that in quadratic equation, to get real roots, our discriminant should be greater than or equal to 0. So our discriminant is b squared minus 4ac. This should be greater than or equal to to zero. Let's get now our ABCs. A is equal to Y, B is equal to negative 1, and C is also equal to negative 1. Let us now substitute this ABCs to our discriminant. Negative 1 squared this positive 1. Negative 4Y times negative 1 is positive 4Y. Copy greater than or equal to 0. Move 1 to the other side. So we have 4Y greater than or equal to negative 1. Then we divide both sides by 4. So we have y is greater than or equal to negative 1 fourth. This will now be our range. So we have y is an element of real numbers such that y is greater than or equal to negative 1 fourth. Now, for the interval notation, we'll start with negative 1 fourth going to the right. So, negative 1 fourth to positive infinity. This is bracket because there is or equal to. Some quick tips. Number one, the domain of rational function is the set of all real numbers except the numbers that will make the denominator equal to zero. Number two, for the range, follow these simple steps. Step 1. Express the function as y equals f of x. Step 2. Express x in terms of y. And step 3. Solve for the values of y. This time, let us check your understanding. Pause this video if you need more time. Now let us answer. So, x squared minus 9 is factorable, and the factors are x minus 3 and x plus 3. So, let us equate these two factors to 0. x minus 3 equals 0, x equals 3. x plus 3 equals 0, x equals negative 3. So, these are the numbers that will make our denominator 0. Therefore, our domain is the set of all real numbers such that x is not equal to positive and negative 3. Let's continue. We may now cancel x plus 3. So we have y equals 1 over x minus 3. Then we apply cross multiplication. So we have yx minus 3y equals 1. To solve for x, let us first move negative 3y to the other side. And then let us divide both sides by y. Now we have a denominator and we're going to equate this to 
0. This is the number that will make our denominator 0. Therefore, this is the number that we have to exclude in our range. So we have y is an element of real numbers such that y is not equal to 0. Gets?